All right, welcome back. So, um, I have a multi-set of 2n plus 1 numbers, um, such that the product of any n divides the product of the other n plus 1. And I want to show that this implies s has two equal elements given some size bound. Of course, the equality case that they have in mind is going to be like uh, s equals to the 0, to the 0, to the 1. Wait, actually, hang on. No, that's not the equality case. What am I talking about? Well, if all the numbers are equal, that's an equality case. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, interesting. Um, any n divides part of the other n plus one remaining numbers. Fascinating. Okay, so let's fix a prime p. And let e1 up to e2 n plus 1 be the vps. Uh, oh, okay, okay, let me just let. No, let's. And then the assertion. In fact, let's just sort them. Alright, well, we can just sort them. Then we need e n plus 1. So the last. The, the, the tail end of the VP should be less than the, um, shit. I think this is the statement I want. So here's a question for the crowd. Um, I mean, there's an equality case when all the numbers are equal, but it's really dumb. <laughs> Uh, sorry, that's not what I meant by equality case. Um, I don't know. But I, I want to ask, like, what are the situations in which this inequality is true? Um, like when you have these numbers and then... Um, the product of wait did i flip a sign yeah no this, this is fine the n plus one biggest ones are better or actually the, the n biggest ones are larger than the n plus one smallest ones when does that hold um ba -da -dun. like one one two um, okay, so let's just shift everything down by... Ugh, these indices are pissing me off. Sorry, I'm going to change it to E1, E0, 3, E2n. Because I'm going to subtract off the... Well, actually, no. There's The number of terms on each side is not quite the same. Uh, but there's an extra E0. Okay, so I can subtract the E0. So it's like... En plus 1 minus E0 plus da da da, plus e2n should be less than or equal to e0 plus e1 minus e0 plus e2 minus e0 plus e n minus e0 Yeah, we did a complex bash, it was gross. Um, would not recommend. Unless you were taking the test, in which case I totally recommend it, because I don't think I would have come up with any of the other solutions. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Fine. Um, so the upshot of this is that uh, no... Note that if e0 equals 0, then in fact, all the EIs have to be 0. Then in fact, um, e1 equals e2 equals e2n must hold. So if you have a prime that appears somewhere and it's not stupid, by which I mean... It's like... Like, if you have a prime that 
doesn't divide every element, then in fact, you have the prime on... It, the VP is the same except for the one that it doesn't divide. So this is the only case that can happen. If E0 equals E0, zero, then you know these things are bigger, or we're supposed to be smaller than or equal to these things. So that's fine. The other case is if you have a prime that divides every element, um, then it's a little weirder. But if you also have a prime that divides every element, um, also, you know, that makes the numbers kind of big. <laughs> yeah, um... So I'm just going to make examples of sequences that says, so what we saw is that uh, 0, k, k, k always works. And it's like, if I have a 1, for example, if the smallest VP is 1, it doesn't actually give me that much more slack room. Um, it's like, I think I can put like a plus 1 here and that's it. And if E0 is 2, um, you, know, I could, you can stick a 2 here. I, I wonder if there's a way to word this that's a little cleaner. Um, But I, I feel like they look like this up until because they're sorted. Like if k is big, um, it takes a while before you can propagate. You can just shift the ei. I don't think you can just shift the eis by one. That's what makes this weird because it's like the product of n dividing product. Like you have more things on the right hand side of the division than on the left hand side. So if you shift, you will actually it is it is not lossless. Um, but yeah, it comes out of something like this. And I think what will happen is that, well, we know the exponents don't go higher than n. So like this exponent can't be very big anyways. Uh, so there's like, there isn't actually a way you can reach, like the, the worst thing you can do, I think is like, quote unquote worst thing. Um, Or hang on, now I'm confused. Why can't I, is it? Did I miss examples? Like, why can't I, plus one, plus one. So if I have an N, and then I have a bunch of Ks. So this works, and I also, any partition works. Um, like if I, Make the last thing into a k plus one. Do I die? Is it, will this kill me? Uh, well, okay, it will kill me just because the um, I get like an n plus one. That's not okay. Like none of the primes, all the all the numbers have to be at most. Yeah. So if you have n and then like actually n, n is just not okay. Um, if you have like n minus one. Can you pull something like I don't think you can pull a swindle like this. Um, hang on. Ugh. I need to think this through. Um, Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, I agree you can double all, oh, yeah, but, but like, there's a bound, right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, sorry, it depends on whether you're going up or down. Um, if you're going up, 
Like if you have a set S and you amplify everything by a prime P, um, then you're worried about breaking the bound. If you have a set S and you try to divide out a common factor, you're worried about breaking the condition. Um, but I think that this is going to be like basically the fact that everything in this tuple has to be at most n. I think basically promises us that. I think it basically promises us that like the like the like e one through e n. So okay, let me stake the claim. The claim is that we must have e one equals dot 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 e equals e n. Yeah, like I want to claim that this is just always the case. Although. Mm. It's weird because I, if I can do this for every prime individually, I still need to do some work to collate them together. Uh, oh my god, really just, uh, I, I can see what, what the poem is trying to do, but I think there are some details. Yeah, E zero. Well, okay, so E zero is the smallest thing. So okay, cool. But let's 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 take an even stronger claim. Uh, so given E zero, um. So I claim we must have e1 equals en. Also, um, in fact, at most e0 plus 1 of the numbers don't equal this common value. Oh, OK. Let, actually, sorry, let, let me write it this way. 2n plus 1 minus e0. How about that? So given that e0 is less than or equal to n, we must have this. I claim this is true. And I think this is just true. Um, Right, so because if if you have any if anything changes Yeah, those are all bad. That's all bad. Um okay, that's all bad. No, is that bad? Hang on, I'm super confused. Oh help. No 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 something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. Um like Sorry, I I missed examples, didn't I? Is this okay? Is this new one that I just added okay? It's like 2k, k plus 1, up to k plus 1, k plus 2. I think this one also fits. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so sorry, let me refine. So I, I think I see what's going on. In fact, um, even for one, I'm sorry, I, I lied a little bit. Um, if you do like one K, K plus one, K plus one, K plus one, all the way on. Oh, that's still okay, right? So you have this, it's, it's like you have this partition function, like you have this E zero, and you can spread it out like from the bottom or from the top. But whatever you do, um, there are, 
um, exists an index i such that um, ei like it's it still Two and minus e zero. Sorry, I misspoke earlier. Yeah, so even for one, there's yeah. So there, there's the, this is what the shape is. It's like you have this, you have e zero. You can use it to spread it like on either of the ends. Uh, yeah, it's a lot like a four. Yeah, yeah, a four. Twenty thirteen a four fights. Um. Okay, did I get the claim right this time? Um, Okay, wait. Uh, I, I want to make sure I didn't fuck up the claim because I already screwed it up more than once. Um, I, I think it's definitely. It's, it's just like I I don't know how to think of it, but it's like if I have a bunch of numbers with some at most n, then you can talk about the way that it's partitioned somehow. Um, Like, maybe I have to handle E0 equals N, like, slightly separately, which is a little sad. Um, but also, also, that doesn't really... It's like, if e, if any exponent is... If there is a prime P for which E0 is at least N, the problem is definitely vacuous. So let's just pretend E0 is strictly less than N, and then I think everything's okay. Um, because you can... Then, like, E sub N is... You can you kind of have the sacred element E sub N that is going to be very well-behaved. Um... Like e or e either even e sub n plus one, so I think the way you write this is that um, let let's just do strictly less than n because the equals n case I don't think will show up anyways, and then what you can do is write the above inequality. So I subtracted by e zero, but I think that's not really what I want to do, um, or we actually want to subtract by e sub n I think, and when we do that, as um, it's like some less than e0 from... Uh, let, me, let me use k as the index name. k. It's like sum from i equals 1 through 2n of e n, like ek minus en. Or sorry, it, it's a little flipped. Ah. Uh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh, so from one side to the other, it's like it's like these. It's just no negative integers. Um, uh, I equals n plus one to two n. Oh, I think I got this. I, we got this. We got this. This is easy clap. Um, it's this. So this is the main inequality. And when we do this, like e0 is a non-negative integer, we have, uh, so we have like e, so the, blah, 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 I can't talk, help. E n minus e minus one. And also like ch 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 e, So e n plus one minus e one, e n plus two minus e n, e two n minus e n. So for some reason I wrote 2n minus 1, I meant 2n. 
Okay, so we're all good. Everything's fine. Um... So you have a bunch of non-negative integers that sum to at most e0, and they're sorted. They're, they're, they come in two flavors, but they're sorted. So this thing is a partition, this thing is a partition, and at most, but also most importantly, like at most so-and-so of them are non-zero. So we're fine. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll just write the proof this way. Um, if we set a equals the left sum, or sorry, let me say first sum, and uh, also, fuck, I, I keep fucking up the direction of everything. <laughs> it's it's so disorienting. Um, Then then in fact, we should have so however many things there are for a um, God, it just is <laughs> fuck. The smallest n minus a summons of a must all be zero. These produce a plus b equals two n required indices. Okay, so we'll move the examples to the left-hand side because those are just for motivation. Um, yeah, index hell, all right? Uh, get used to it, that's math. Um. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a nice problem, actually. I, I think you learn a lot from doing this problem. Okay, so now I have to call these together. I think the bound should just work using the fact that every prime is greater than two. Uh, might require a little bit of care, but I think we're fine. So there's two types of primes. There's primes that, you know, cause one entry to be zero and everything else to be Oh, actually, this is super annoying. All right, I might have to do, okay. So assume there is a prime P that doesn't divide everything. I want to do this in two steps, all right. Um, oh shit. It's two and plus one. No, it's fine. Assume there's a prime p that doesn't divide every term of s. And well, I'll just say nominally my induction on n because what, basically what's going to happen is that in this case where there is a weird prime, I'm just going to strip it out. Um, then by the above. Um, in fact, there is one element of S not divisible by P. 
say x. And all other elements of S satisfy VP have the same exponent of P. So we can apply induction hypothesis onto 1 over P times S set minus. So throw away X and then any other element. And apply induction hypothesis onto. Okay, so we throw away. If in the in the one weird case where you know the prime doesn't show up at all, toss it. Um, otherwise, so otherwise, assume we're in the situation where every prime does appear. The primes p1, p2, and uh, fuck, I need a letter. Pm appear with minimum multiplicities. Um u1 up to um, respectively. So the trick is that um, so because every element so assume for contradiction they're all distinct Uh, okay. So basically the idea is like, for example, if the minimum multiplicity of some prime is 1, um, then you lose at most two things, right? Like, this, this causes at most two kills. And if you have, like, like you, you kill off Those, okay. So the number of bad elements, um, If any, okay, so if any UI is at least, shit, oh. Do I have to be careful for n equals zero? I have to watch out for n equals zero, right? Oh my god, uh, no, I don't want to deal with n equals zero. Can we just fuck n equals zero? Uh... Oh, actually no, uh, it's fine. N has to be at least two for the poem statement to not be vacuo. Uh, wait. Wait, N has to be at least like three. Okay, never mind. Um So we'll just say the base case N equals three is clear. Because we only ever go down by one, so it's fine, I think. <laughs> Alright. For n less than or equal to 2, there is nothing to prove. Well, actually, eh. Let's just say 1, 2, 3 are easy. Uh, wait. Uh, let's do n equals 1, 2. Okay, so I see we got contradiction, they're all distinct. Um, how many kills do I get? See, the thing is, I have to define kill. Um,
Okay, so imagine the following algorithm. For i equals 1 through m, take the index promised by the and draw and cross out and draw an x on every on all how, how many so minus e0 so ui plus one elements Is at least. I'm sorry. This this is a, one of those really annoying write-ups. So if all the elements have GCD at least two, okay, whatever. Cross out. If after the algorithm ends, there are at least two numbers not xed out, we win. However, the total number of x's is some um, ui plus one. Um, Okay, this is why I had to assume positive minimum multiplicities. So in particular, uh, there are at most n minus 1 plus m equals 2n minus 2. So in fact, so contradiction. All right, I, ho I hope I got everything right. Also, the write-up got completely cut off and I wasn't even paying attention. Thank you, Dotted, for 22 months! Um, God, are you also in the Zooks Club? I finally tried to get rid of the word Zooks from Otis because I got fed up with it. But I think, like, that caused the... I think it made it worse. <laughs> Which I honestly thought might happen, but I was like, let's just try it, and if it makes it worse, then at least it'll be funny. Um, which is exactly what happened, and it was actually not that funny, so... RIP. Um. <laughs> Anyways, okay, I think this should work, though, because... Two N, yeah. It's, it's a little weird, because, like, if it actually gets all the way up to N, it's just, like, not even close. It's, like, two to the... Two to the N is not really the bound, but... Like, the bound is, like, that-ish. Um, so, you know, that's good enough. It's, it's not worth optimizing. Like, if you can get two to the end, then you can, you know what's going on. And you could optimize it if you wanted to, but I don't think it's very fun to. All right, cool, cool, cool. Does anyone have the AOP start for this problem? Just so I don't have, to, just while I do the write up. Also, because I'm a little confused about what exactly this source is. 
Uh, so I know real Platonese. What does L2 mean? Is, is this divided into levels? I'm not familiar with this particular contest. Analyze. Okay, cool. Uh, let P be a fixed prime. And E0 less than N. Okay. You know, I think I want to change the order of the highlights so that it's gray and then white, or gray and then blank. I'll do that at some point. Where maybe some point is now. Uh, this is why I never get any work done, just FYI. <laughs> um... Ta-da! Okay, anyways. Um, uh, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Right, back, back to work. Um, okay, cool. Let me make sure this looks reasonable. Yeah, it, it's a little funny because like, I, I, you have to deal with this edge case of E0 equals 0 separately because it doesn't increase the size of that one element it doesn't touch. Although actually, you could delete it anyways, but it's, it's just super annoying. It's easier to, I think, to just kill the edge case to start. I.e. E0 equals zero for some prime P in the claims notation. I can just let this be and and it's okay. I think it's a little cleaner that way. Oops, less than equal to. Does this proof- this proof doesn't actually use E0 as less than or equal to N, does it? I don't think it uses that. Let's just drop that condition. Yeah, I just want to, like, what is 
What does L2 mean? Like... I'll, I'll just encode it. I'll just encode it this way. It's fine. Um, yeah, this is a cool problem, actually. I'm glad I got to do this one. Um, I don't think it's particularly difficult, but I think like especially I think especially for the people who are like newer to combo, I think you learn a lot from doing this problem. Um, also, it's a combo problem and not a number theory problem. Surprise. Very nice. Uh, okay, cool. Alright, and we will post this, I guess. Half time.